I'm gonna give this movie a straight 8 out of 10. If you wanna have the best experience out of this movie, you should go and watch it on the big screen. Anyways, the story begins with Gru driving to the Lisipaboon School of Villainy riding in a supercar. This is where he took a training for becoming one of the biggest villains in the world. He gets followed by two of his minions riding on a smaller version of the same supercar. Among all the batchmates out there, he gets to find out one of his rivals, Maxime Lamal. After seeing Gru, Maxime Lamal makes fun of his bold head and says how pathetic it was for him to fail on the moon mission. And then he introduces his girlfriend Valentina. The principal of this institute arrives on the wheel and declares Maxim Lamal as the winner of the best villain award. To be honest, Gru was feeling a bit jealous about that event. After all, he also wanted that kind of recognition from the entire world back in his villainy days. During the speech, he introduces his pet cockroach to the audience and talks about how unique of a creature it is that it has been able to survive on this planet since a very long period of time. He then showcases everyone that he also has turned himself into a cockroach after taking inspiration from them. And by the way, I'm just wondering if he looks like this all the time, how the hell on earth does he manage to sleep with his girlfriend? Anyways, Gru then reveals himself as an agent of the AVL and some agents break into that school to capture Maxime Lamal. His girlfriend Valentina discreetly ran away when he was being dragged out of the school by the AVL agents. Before leaving, Maxime swears to Gru that he will come back and take his revenge. Gru then goes back to his home. Margot, Edith and Agnes are having breakfast at the table. Gru now has a baby boy who goes by Gru Jr. The baby doesn't like his father for some reason and I asked my intrusive mind about what could be the reason behind that. But I couldn't come up with a logical explanation. So I will just say that it was done for a comedic expression in the movie. You can also get to see in the previous chapters of this movie that the mother of Gru, Mrs. Marlena, always used to mock him for no reason. I drew a picture picture of me landing on the moon. Eh. Look mom, I made a real rocket based on the macaroni prototype. Eh. His baby also likes to irritate him just like his mother. Gru then calls two of his minions to change the diaper of his baby. This is when the ex avial director Mr. Silas Ramsbottom comes to their house to warn him that Maxim Lamal has broken out of the jail and he is coming after Gru. By the way, it's great to see that Silas is now back in the business because the previous director of the AVL, Ms. Valeria Da Vinci was literally a bitch. She was the one who fired both Gru and Lucy for almost no valid reason in chapter 3 of the movie. They all prepare baggages to move to Mayflower for rehabilitation to ensure the safety of their family. This dude still has the shrink ray he got in chapter 1 of the movie for the moon mission. Agnes had to leave her goat for the journey and, in case you don't know, she got that goat from the woods of Fredonia when she was searching for a unicorn. All the minions of Gru were getting on the bus to move to the avial headquarter. Getting fed up with their mischievous behavior, one of the avial agents says that he will not tolerate this kind of behavior anymore and he will take take strict actions this time. But their minions, they follow their heart most of the times rather than their brain. Gru on the other hand has finally reached their new home. Three minions are also going to live with them to take care of the baby. They will now stay in disguise for a while. Lucy has got the job of a hairdresser. Gru is now going to be a businessman of solar panels. I don't know why but I'm feeling like this job looks a lot like a mockery for Gru as he failed in the moon mission in chapter 1 of the movie. Anyways, Margot, Edith and Agnes have also got their fake names to maintain discretion. In the meanwhile, the pet cockroach of Maxime goes through the sewer ventilation line to the comeback party of Maxime Lamal. This dude has got an entire army of cockroaches over there. Maxime demonstrates a plan on how he will abduct the baby Gru and turn him into a cockroach. Gru and Lucy on the other hand are making breakfast for the children. Agnes is now struggling to accept her new name, Brittany. Gru then cajoles the girl on why adopting this fake name is necessary for their safety. On the same day, he gets to meet their new neighbor Harry Prescott and his daughter Poppy Prescott. And I would like to remind you that this character has been voiced by no other than the beautiful diva of Hollywood, Joey King. Gru then takes Margot to her new school. His path crosses with Poppy again. She always stares at Gru with an eye full of suspicion. Director Silas Ramsbottom announces that he is looking for five volunteers who will be tested with a super serum to turn them into mega minions. Or they might just get exploded. Five minions get selected for the program 
and it goes right with all the minions. A beautiful lady has come to the salon of Lucy and the woman shows a catalogue to follow. But Lucy uses the wrong combination of chemicals and all the hair in the middle gets pulled out. I don't know why but this bald head kinda reminds me of Balthazar Brett from chapter 3 of the movie. He was also bald in the back of his head. Anyways, Lucy accidentally causes a short circuit inside the salon and then she deliberately runs away. Maxim is now making a plan on how to abduct Gru Jr. This is the first time you can get to see a glimpse of his cockroach vehicle. This van on the sidewalk says pest control and exactly then Maxim Lamal breaks out of the ground on his vehicle. Now that is fantastic. On the other hand, baby Gru is busy annoying his dad inside the car. Bullied Margot comes back from the school. And by the way, is it not weird that none of his daughters have been aging throughout the entire franchise? I guess this statement from chapter 3 of the movie can explain the secret behind that. 15? She's 12. She looks 12 and will always be 12. Anyways, Gru at night goes out to throw the trash bag and that's when he encounters Poppy again. Poppy reveals to Gru that she knows everything about his identity and if he doesn't help her in pulling a heist, she will let the whole internet know exactly who he is and what he used to do in the past. Five of the Mega Minions inside the Avial headquarters go to see their fellow Minions. But these Mega Minions are still struggling to control their powers. In the meanwhile, Valentina inside the vehicle asks Maxim about his past interactions with Gru. Maxim then recalls a memory from his student life at the Lissi Paboon School of Villainy. Gru once stole the costume idea and lyrics of Maxim for a stage performance and it was the first event which planted a seed of hatred for Gru in his heart. The land beside a gas station to fill out the vehicle and his credit card declines. He threatens the shopkeeper to fix the problem and out of anger he turns the man into a cockroach with his device. Lucy is now out for shopping with Edith and Agnes. The packet of the cereal says fluffy and I'm kind of feeling like this name on the packet was working as a symbol of how Agnes has always been a lover of fluffy dolls and pets. Anyways, that lady from the salon was also shopping over there. As soon as the woman gets sight of Lucy, she begins to chase after them. Poppy in the meanwhile was practicing dance with her cat and that's when Gru comes to see her along with his baby. Poppy tells Gru that she is looking for a honey badger inside the Lissi Paboon School of Villainy and Gru must have to assist her in the heist. Gru decides to help her finding no other choice. The mega minions are now busy hunting criminals and helping civilians around the city but in the most retarded way possible. Anyways, Silas pulls up at the right time to rescue all the minions after the mayhem they have caused in the city in the name of social work. Gru at night breaks into the Lissipaboon school with Poppy. They get to find out the honey badger they had been looking for but instead of sedating that creature, Gru accidentally pushes the injection into his ass and that's when the old lady wakes up by the sound of the breach alarm. She chases them all riding on the wheels but fails to get hold of them. They use the vehicle of that old lady to run away from that place. And this is her name by the way. Can you spell it? Obviously you can't. The woman gives a phone call to Maxime Lamal to give him a heads up on Gru and his entire family. That honey badger actually had a tracker in its collar belt and that's how she managed to find out the exact location of Gru and Poppy. In the next morning, Gru and Lucy go to the tennis court for having some fun. The old lady comes to their house in search of the honey badger. As soon as Poppy gets to see that woman, she slips away from the back of their house. Margot sends a message to Gru describing that old lady. Director Silas Silas Ramsbottom finds out about the security breach and he calls in all the mega minions to safeguard Gru and his family. All of them had been enjoying their vacations in different parts of the world but they immediately head for Mayflower after receiving the message. Gru then rushes back to home to safeguard his daughters. His principal still treats him the exact way he used to be treated when he was a student. They all get into a squabble and begin to fight. Maxim arrives over there to take advantage of the distraction to abduct the baby. Poppy comes up with the same gateway a vehicle from the Lissipaboon heist and they go after Maxime Lamal. They both get into a fight and Gru finds out that Maxime has turned his baby into a mini cockroach. The baby doesn't recognize his father anymore. Due to the heavy weight and crackles on the rooftop, the vehicle of Maxime collapses into the building. When Gru was about to fall off the tower, his baby finally recognizes him and turns against Maxime Lamal. He punches Maxime onto the ground. The mega minions arrive over there to arrest him. Gru goes back to their old house and he brings back the 
goat of Agnes and his pet Kyle. After a couple of days, he goes to the villain detention center to meet Maxime Lamal and he says that he owes something to Maxime. He wants to make peace with him and perform a stage performance together inside the prison facility. Maxime Lamal finally amends peace with him and they sing together inside the AVL prison. Valentina has been imprisoned with the dog as well. Like what the fa? Like what kind of crime is the dog convicted of? Vector, El Macho, Balthazar Brett and Mr. Perkins are also living inside the same facility. It's good to see that Vector has somehow managed to escape Moon and come back to Earth. Also, the principal of the Lucipabun School of Villainy has been imprisoned. It was kind of disheartening for me to see that Drew didn't have a comeback in this movie. What he did with the minions of Gru was never shown in the entire movie. Anyways, I would love to tell you that very soon I'm going to showcase all the hidden details inside this movie as soon as it comes out on the streaming sites. Until then, take care and bye-bye. Oh,